Hello, my name is Todd Silvius and thanks for downloading this professional development video tutorial on the Compass Learning Odyssey platform. In the previous tutorial, we learned together how to set up report parameters for running a student progress report. In this continuation of that video tutorial, we are now going to generate that student progress report, examine the data sorting options that are available to the teacher, and also look at the different ways that this data can be exported and shared with students outside of the system. So let's take a look here at the wizard that we just set up in the last tutorial. All the parameters are the same, again, that we created just a little while ago, and we are running a student report on this QC00.anonymous student. Once the parameters are all set, we simply hit Generate Report Online immediately. and the system works to gather the data information from that student's progress report from the date parameters specified in the wizard. This may take long if you are using multiple students in your batch report processing. This system, this procedure may take long if the Compass Learning Odyssey servers are being highly utilized at that particular time. Again, so you can determine when you want to run your reports online instantly or if you want to generate them offline and return to them at a later point in the day. Okay, once we've generated this report, we can scan through and see that passing grades are denoted with green. Oh, here's the color code system. And failed activities are scored with the red to give you an indication. We can also see that the activities are grouped by activity type. So in other words, every activity associated with this chapter on chemical bonding is in this area, including all the lessons. And that means the actual instructional component of the lesson and the quiz that follows up. And the tests are the test attempts are located at the top. quickly overviewing how you can use this data we can see that this student attempted this chemical bonding test in February and then a little bit more than a week later or just about a week later in March they attempted it again and that they went from a 30 to an 80 percent that's quite an improvement as you scroll through you can see this this particular page is quite extensive and then advancing to page two, you can see it also contains a lot of information. This area at the bottom is called the summary. This was addressed in the previous video tutorial on whether or not you as a teacher, when you create these reports, would like to generate a report summary or not. Simply, um, we can see that the um, number of completed quizzes have been averaged together for a 44%. The number of completed tests have been averaged together for a 38%. Again, if you are sharing this type of report with, let's say, a parent at a conference, or sitting down with a student and talking with the student, when you generate your report parameters, you might not want to include this report summary, uh, simply to avoid student or parent confusion because we know that the averages are not considered in standards-based grading. Instead, the highest grade achieved is what is recorded in the record books for that particular student's lesson and their attempt at that assessment. However, sharing this with a teacher or just kind of getting an idea of the level of, of uh, aptitude the student has in this particular subject, this might give the teacher a kernel of information that you might find useful. So again, depending on with whom you are sharing this report, you may or may not want to include this summary here, just simply to avoid confusion. Okay, now we've generated our report. Let's go back to the first page here. We have these sorting options listed at the top here. Currently, by default, we are sorting by activity. Again, the defaults are usually the most preferred by, by the teacher users. However, you can also sort this report by date and time. So you can see chronologically, how the different activities are are um, completed by the student. If you, however, take a look at 
that chemical bonding example, you can see nicely back to back that these two attempts were made and this is very helpful so you can see improvement. However, if you were viewing this report chronologically, this earlier test would be separated by by a week's worth of information. And it might be very difficult to compare the two test attempts if it were sorted by date and time. However, sorting by date and time might be very useful for another purpose that, um, that you have as a teacher to run the report. One student per page, sorting by activity. One student per page, sort by date and by time. So the one student per page um, reports are, you might be thinking, um, well, we are sorting, we only have one student here per page. We only ran the report on one student. But remember, you can batch process and batch generate student reports. So if you're doing multiple students at a time, selecting the one student per page options might be very helpful for you as well, instead of grouping them all together, all, all students on one page. Okay, so now that we've sorted our, our um, data that we've received from the report, we have exporting options. And here we can see the view as PDF, and we can save that target, and we're going to save it to our desktop. And once we take a look at our desktop, we can see the student progress report for this anonymous user has been saved right there. So let's take a look at it. You can see that there are more pages now on this PDF file than there were only three pages on the report runner inside of Compass. Uh, simply that is, just to clarify, that is simply because the, uh, the, the page limitations of the PDF here are 8.5 by 11, whereas they're much longer and more extensive on the Compass report generator. However, it does sort it and then brackets it um, uh, into your um, printable pages here on this PDF for you if you do want to share it with somebody else. So that's the way to export by PDF. If we head back, we can see, there we go, we can also export by CSV. CSV simply stands for comma separated value. Uh, think of it as a generic spreadsheet where you're just you you're using the spreadsheet powers for data manipulation only you're not uh, too concerned about you know color scheming or you know bold facing or formatting you're you're looking at a CSV file just to look at raw data and to sort that data as you need so we can see here that if um, we wanted to we could scroll over and we could see that entire report set up as a, as a CSV file or a very generic and plain looking um, spreadsheet file. If I wanted to group all these together, I could sort and filter. And then I could see all my acids and bases attempts, all my atomic structure attempts, everything related to balancing equations. It's all right there at one, at one spot. If I wanted to sort and I wanted to have the grades for the different activities in order, I could sort those as well. And you could see the 10, 10s, 15s, 20s, and things like uh, the grades like that, how they appear. If I wanted to sort by completion date, I could do likewise. And I could get a chronological listing over here in my CSV file. So again, data manipulation is very, um, very convenient over here in the CSV. If I were batch processing student reports, and I exported that student report as a CSV, I could simply click on this column here of my column of my usernames, and then I could sort, and then all the sim all the same user activity will be grouped together in clusters as I would scroll down my CSV, and at the end of this list, it would pick up with the next user down at the bottom there. Again, uh, an, a, a different way to utilize the the information that's coming out of Compass. I'm not going to save these changes. I'm just going to head back here. But that was, in a nutshell, what you can do when you generate a student progress report. You can data sort the options, and also then the, you can see the different ways to export the options, including exporting with that summary, for, depending on if you're sharing the report with a student or parent, or if you're sharing it with another teacher who understands the ins and outs of standards-based grading a little more closely. So I hope you found this tutorial very interesting and uh, useful, and thanks for watching.